this short lecture, we'll talk about ATP powered pumps. So they are one type of membrane carriers or transporters which require ATP hydrolysis to function. So they are ATP powered pumps and they require a lot of power. So there are four class of pumps that we are going to talk about P class ATPAs, F class pumps, V class pumps and ABC transporters. Now three of them are quite similar. So basically the P class pumps are found in plasma membrane of plant, fungi, bacteria, etc. The plasma membrane of higher eukaryotes has almost every cell in a higher eukaryote would have a sodium potassium ion exchange pump. Sarcoplasmic reticulum would have a calcium pump. So all of these are example of P class pumps. F class pumps are very common in bacterial plasma membrane and the inner membrane of mitochondria. Also they are present in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast. So F class pumps are a bit different than the other three. We would know why. In V class pumps, it is present in vacuoles or basically lysosomes. So basically they are pr uh, present in membrane bound components, endosomes or lysosomes. They help in basically transport of protons inside that and help in acidification. ABC transporters are really important. They are bacterial plasma membrane. Uh, they are present in bacterial plasma membrane. They help in um, taking up nutrients such as amino acid, sugar or even peptide. So also present in mammalian plasma membrane. They can transport phospholipids, small lipophilic drugs, cholesterol and other molecules. Especially ABC transporters are highly studied in context of multidrug resistance because many of them encodes for efflux pumps which take out antibiotics and other drugs from the cell and throw out uh, in, in the environment. So that is why ABC transporters are really important. We would have a detailed video on ABC transporter, but this is an overview. Among all of these four, F-class ATPAs and V-class ATPAs both are proton pump. But note that in F-class ATPAs, instead of hydrolyzing ATP, it actually generates ATP. So first we talk about ABC transporter or ABC ATPAs. So ABC stands for ATP binding cassette. These are large family of protein that use ATP to transport molecules across the membrane. They have two domains, transmembrane domain, which has the ligand binding site and hydrophobic domain, which embeds in the membrane. Then there is nucleotide binding domain, which is present in the cytosolic site. And it is basically the binding site for ATP, which fuels the pump. So right now let's see the pump in action. So here is the, in red color, you can see the molecule that is going to be transported in. So first ATP binds, which triggers the conformation change that alters the shape of that uh, entire ABC transporter, take the molecule in and right now it would be eventually taken out. So, so taken in, in into the cell. So basically the ATP hydrolysis triggers the conformation change and that fuels the uptake of molecule. It can also happen in the other way around. That means efflux pump, taking things from inside and throwing it outside. That is also possible for uh, ABC transporters. But in a different video, we are going to talk about that, not in this one. Then we talk about the V-type ATPAs, which are enriched in vacuolar membranes, especially in lysosomes. So in the lysosomes, their job is to acidify. So they have two major components, V0 complex, which is embedded into the cell membrane. And there is a V1 complex, which is located in the, uh, uh, basically in the cytoplasmic site. Basically these particular um, job of these particular pumps are to transport proton and they transport proton um, against the concentration gradient. So where there are more protons, they even pump more and more protons into that location. So something, if you want to move something against the concentration gradient, obviously ATP hydrolysis would be required and that would fuel the transport process. That's how V-type ATPAs work. They are enriched in a lysosome, they are enriched in endosome, any, any compartment that acidifies stuff. Then we'll talk about the P-type ATPAs and among that we are going to talk about the sodium potassium ATPAs which is very common. Sodium potassium ATPAs uh, basically maintains the electrochemical gradient of sodium and potassium across the membrane. This is crucial for cell volume uh, regulation, uh, uh, neuronal resting membrane potential and muscle contraction. So it has two major domain. Alpha domain has the sodium, potassium and ATP binding site. The beta domain is uh, in, the trans, in, in the transmembrane region. 
so three sodium binds to it and basically gets released onto the outer side whereas two potassium binds to it and get released into the cytoplasmic side so this is this entire process is triggered by atp hydrolysis because again sodium and potassium both goes against their concentration gradient so that would obviously require the energy so here is a breakdown of how sodium potassium atpas work three sodiums from the cytosolic side binds to the pump atp gets hydrolyzed the channel gets phosphorylated i mean phosphorylated and that triggers the conformational change so this conformational change releases the sodium onto the uh, into the extracellular space at and the same point potassium ions bind to the cytoplasmic pockets of the uh, sodium potassium atpas this potassium binding uh, basically triggers the second conformation change that lead to the uh, release of phosphate group and this conformation change now eventually release the potassium inside the cytoplasm this is how three sodium moves out to potassium comes in and all that happens by the power of atp so the phosphor the, the phosphorylation of the uh, pump initially was the driving force for these movements eventually the pumps would return to its original conformation again starting a new cycle now at last we are going to talk about the f type atps because this was different than all of them we can find f type atps mostly in the mitochondria or even basically in the uh, mostly in the mitochondrial membrane inner membrane of mitochondria so there is f0 subunit which is embedded into the membrane and forms the channel for the proton remember these are proton pumps so they they would form the channel for proton to move uh, down their gradient so f1 subunit is basically a particular dynamo so imagine this is a molecular dynamo which is generating electricity the the, the normal dynamo would gen generate electricity but in this case the driving force is basically a mechan mechanical rotation and that happens in the f0 subunit which translate into the alpha and beta subunit which produces atp eventually it doesn't require atp it forms the atp so it takes the energy from the proton motive force and convert it into atp this is how atp is generated in our mammalian cell it is coupled with electron transport chain so all the protons which are coming from nadh fadh eventually would move um, across these particular uh, mitochondrial membrane and would be accumulated into the intermembrane space so the space between the mitochondrial outer and the inner membrane eventually there are too much proton build up in the intermembrane space now through this atpas or f type atpas these protons would move downhill to the gradient so it would bind to the c ring c ring would rotate and eventually it would allow the proton to move inside the cell now this create this rotation creates the possible energy which is used to generate atp so that is why f type atpas is very different from any other type of atpas so how f type atpas work we can literally see if we cut a cross section at that alpha beta subunit the conformation looks like this they have different type of conformation like loose open and tight so in the open configuration atp adp and organic phosphate inorganic phosphate binds to that particular groove eventually the conformation moves from loose to tight in loose conformation the adp and pi uh, can go together and eventually in tight conformation they would form uh, the atp and eventually this entire head of the dynamo rotates also and that is how they have different rotation cycles and this would create atp so i hope this video was good enough in a different video we are going to talk more about all of these atpas in much much more details this was a quick overview so if you need more notes and flashcards see us uh, see our instagram page or facebook page you can also follow our website there are tons and tons of mcq that you can solve and improvise your preparation so basically you can support us using super thanks your small contribution is our motivation see you in next video